What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Not any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. You're right. This isn't really the time to mourn, is it? Not when there's so many who are still going to die unless we do something. Mourning can come later. By the time the snows come, this will all be done one way or the other. You little me harassing your dog. I should say it's the other way round. Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. And don't you think I don't know it? Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Full dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. You are welcome to this if you really want it. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. I just did. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Oh, he's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. What do you need? Ask away. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too. And devout Andrastians to boot. Or did I dream all of that? <laughs> Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on a cold, hard ground, isn't it? You would do violence upon me? I am shocked and dismayed. The dogs would never threaten me like this, you know. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. 
My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Al Eamon wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I was young and resentful and not very pious. Of course I blamed him. I remember screaming at him like a little child. Well, I was a child, so I doubt it was surprise. Ah Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Arl's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay, out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Arl came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. All I know is that the Arl is a good man, and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. What do you need? Ask away. Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Then let's just get back to what we were doing. No offense, but I'd really rather not discuss it. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fenix. At your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a grey wood? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? I can see why you might be suspicious, being a grey warden and all. Were I in your shoes, I would feel the same way. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot, so I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. You should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy, otherwise, come speak with me. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please, tell me. Hmm, I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I'm originally from Orzammar, just as you are, I suspect. You don't have the look of a surface dwarf about you. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant cast. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. One day, a noble woman came to my store 
She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like that. Ah, yes, your brand. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, the woman, as I said, accused me of stealing the braces. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigers. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface. First opportunity I got. Never looked back. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerum, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boy's a natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery and addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the good... You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am, carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me, but poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. 
but I know he would want his work carried on, his pledge fulfilled. My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place, well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it, at least? What do you wish of me? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. If I wanted to leave, then I would go. I remain, so do not ask such pointless questions. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What do you wish of me? We are in camp, so tis as good a time. Why? Do you wish me to leave? Uh, then I...
Yes. Indeed. Yes. I shall... Indeed. Yes. Yes. As you say. The carnage we left in the wilds was horrifying. So, I take it you did not enjoy your Templar training? That's directed at me, I take it. Do you see any others about who have failed at their religious instruction? I didn't fail, I was recruited into the Grey Wardens. And if you had not been recruited, what would have happened instead? I would have turned into a drooling lunatic, slaughtered the Grand Cleric and run through the streets of Denham in my small clothes, I guess. Your self-awareness does you credit. I thought you'd like that. Stop looking at me, mongrel. I have nothing you want. Why do you keep staring at me so, you flea-ridden b- Back off! I have the right to charge what I wish. You profit from their misfortune. I should have the Templars give away everything in your carts. You wouldn't dare. Any of you step too close to my goods and I'll- it's so nice to see everyone working together in a crisis. Warms the heart. Oh, you there. You look able. Would you care to make a tiny profit helping a beleaguered businessman? Didn't I mention profit? He is charging outlandish prices for things people desperately need. Their blood is filling his pockets. His only survival of the fittest all of these Cretans would do the same in his shoes, given the chance. I have limited supplies. The people decide what those supplies are worth to them. You bought most of your wares from these very people last week. Now they flee for their lives, and you want to talk business? Look, stranger, I have a hundred silvers if you drive this rabble off, starting with that priest. I'm an honest merchant, nothing more. Would it help these folks if they could buy no goods at all? They spend their very last coin because they are desperate. And this man preys upon them as surely as the bandits outside the city. Ah, I'm not arguing anymore. Drive off this woman and get your hundred silvers. Otherwise, I'm taking my wagon and leaving. Maker's breath. Sometimes it's truly not worth operating this far south. Just charge what you would have before this tragedy. Fine, yes. Just stop complaining. You're giving me a headache. So, we have come to solve every squabble in the village personally. 
My, but the Darkspawn will be impressed. Thank you for your generous assistance. May the Maker watch over your path. I shall do it. We found someone sleeping in our field. Let him take notice and shine upon thee, for thou hast done his work this day. But isn't he right? The ban left us. We're going to die. This minion is but the first of those who will destroy us! No! Do not touch me! You bring evil and destruction! It is the end! He was right, wasn't he? There's no hope for us. Then... What shall we do? We must try to go north somehow. Your king is dead! There is no hope! If you seek refuge in the Chantry, there's simply no room left. So many are coming to Lothering. I make no assumptions. I know it's not something many dwarves do, but if you wish to offer devotion to the Maker, you may enter. Were? Did you drive them off? Well, so Brian will appreciate that. Is he still alive? The revered mother put him there a few weeks back. He'll be dead soon enough. Make her watch over you. There's word of darkspawn stragglers, but no sign of the mate. Yes? Who might you be? I see. I am Sir Bryant, commander of the Lothering Templars. Tan Loghain declared all Grey Wardens traitors responsible for the King's death. You know this, I hope. And set a bounty on any who survived. I don't believe the Grey Wardens would be as careless or malicious as the Tan claims. But either way, there it is. It is best you not linger, though. Just in case. Maker's breath. How many times must we drive them off? All of them? By yourself? It's true. I saw it from my post. It was over so fast, we didn't even have time to get over there. Sad that it needed to come to that. But then they asked for it. Will you accept a small reward for your service? If it interests you, there is a Chanter's board outside full of quests that need doing. The Chanters even offer pay for some of them. Now, unless there's something else you need. They are. With the Ban having taken his men north, the village is left to its fate. We will evacuate as many as we can before the Horde reaches us. I will stay as long as I am needed. Now, unless there's something else you need. If the matter is important, certainly. 
I was there at the farmhold. The beast stood there, wet with the blood of the children. He didn't even deny slaughtering them. The revered mother ordered him caged. She has more mercy than I do. But perhaps she is right, and the Maker has love for all his creations, even the Kunari. You can ask the revered mother. I say let him rot until the Darkspawn claim him. Travel safely, and may the Maker watch over you. Who? I beg your pardon. I did not see you approach. Sir Donald? Is that you? Alistair? By the Maker, how are you? I, I was certain you were dead. Not yet. No thanks to turn Loghain. If Arl Eamon were well, he'd set Loghain straight soon enough. If he were well? What, what do you mean? The Arl is stricken with an illness that threatens his life. We have found no cure, either natural or magical. When did this happen? Only a few weeks ago, but he has declined quickly. No one knows the nature of the illness, and even magic has done little to slow its progress. Our only hope now is a miracle. Every knight of Redcliffe has gone in search of the urn of sacred ashes. Andraste's ashes are said to cure any illness. But I fear we are chasing a fable. With each day, my hope dims. What? And you have his locket? And a note? Maker's mercy. Thank you for giving me these. I would never have known otherwise. Thank you. I wonder how many of us have met similar fates on this mad quest. Why is that, if I may ask? I see. The Arl is a popular man, it's true. Tern Loghain, however, is a hero throughout Ferelden. Whatever the Tern has done or not done, the Arl remains ill or worse. That is my primary concern. The Arl fell ill before the King died. But what if Loghain planned that too? Oh, such thoughts do not sit well with me. We should see what's happening in Redcliffe ourselves. I believe that now more than ever. If nothing else, I am certain you would be welcomed at Castle Redcliffe. The Arlesser is there, and she could tell you more than I could. Supposedly, the urn contains the ashes of the Prophetess Andraste. Surely you know all this. If you're truly interested, there are books here containing a great deal of lore. Nothing I have found leads me to believe that this was anything more than a quest of desperation. With Henrik gone, I need to return to Redcliffe. Perhaps later I will seek out the scholar his note mentions. But I must go. Thank you again, good sir. You have been most helpful. And when the Maker spoke, a chant of light scattered in the darkness. The word dispelled fear and ignorance. Let those who cry out from the shadows. And when the chant spreads across all. Will you be making a donation to the chantry, my friend? You look like you have salvaged more of value than most who make it here. I am the revered mother of this chantry. Traditionally, those who seek my blessing tithe first. A great number of people could be fed and clothed for a fraction of your finery. But you must do as your heart wills. What can I do for you, then? It might have been kinder to execute him, but I leave his fate to the Maker. Why does he interest you? He butchered an entire farmhold. Only one of the youngest hid long enough to survive. The child said his father had found the Canari gravely wounded and took him in. That kindness was repaid with murder. The bandsman found the Canari just standing amidst the carnage. He did not resist them. He would not say, though he acknowledged his guilt. Even the seasoned knights who apprehended him were disturbed by the carnage. However docile he appears, do not be fooled. 
That canary is a danger. The maker demands justice, regardless of his race. Then his next victims might count you and me as their murderers. Your custody. And who might you be? A Grey Warden. Oh dear, I will have to ask you to leave before you bring trouble on our heads. To defend against the Blight? Perhaps that is a form of atonement. But are you certain you can control him? I... No, I cannot. There will be too much trouble for us if we are seen cooperating with you. The Maker cares no less for that Canary's victims than for the thousands who fell in Ostagar. Now, good day. Yes. What can I do for you now? I cannot help you without risking the safety of this village enchantry. The best I can do is keep your presence a secret. I am sorry. Now, if there is nothing else... May the Maker guard you, Grey Warden. <laughs>